Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kelly Mejia Breton, and I am a fellow at NYC Data Science Academy. Prior to joining the academy, I was a senior analyst at Pyra Energy Group, a consulting company, where I forecasted crude oil uh, prices and product prices long term and short term. Today, I will be presenting my capstone project. Um, have you ever seen a marketing ad for a movie and thought, wow, I gotta go see this? And then you go see it, it's a great film, the actors play an amazing role, and in your book, it's already won an Oscar. And then it's not even nominated? What makes viewers rank a film in the top 10? Is there an underlying marketing strategy within the details of the length, the genre, the rating? Is there a model to fit, uh, to make a good prediction on if a uh, movie is ranked top 10 by viewers, will it win an Oscar? My client is a fashion designer who provides clothing for uh, celebrities. And this year, for the Academy Awards, they would like to only provide clothing to those who have a high likelihood of winning an Oscar. Their, their goal is, to, um, is for their designs to live long after the red carpet, in the photos, in the video clips that are to come in the years. Um, they wanted to be remembered when the award is mentioned. The data set. The data set is provided by Open Data Soft. It's a combination of the Blockbuster database and the Oscar Demographics data set. It contains the top 10 annual films for the past 10 years, ranked by IMDB, Internet Movie Database. Um, I use the Oscar data set to create a classification column, um, recording whether the film or any affiliates of the film won an Oscar. The original data set contains 398 observations with 21 variables. Exploring the data. So looking at the MPAA rating by the box office receipts, uh, we see that PG-13 films have a high box office receipt, followed by uh, rated G films, general uh, audience, rated PG and then rated R. When I look at this, it makes sense to me. Like that's what I expected to see. Because when I think of going to the movies as a family, I think of a PG-13 film because everyone can enjoy it versus a general audience, maybe just the children enjoy it. So if I'm going out with my whole family, I'm probably gonna see a PG-13 film buying about four tickets, five tickets. Whereas if I wanna see a rated R film, I may just buy one ticket or I may just buy two if it's date night. Um, so this, to me, isn't surprising. This is what I expected. When I look at the NPAA rating um, by number of Oscars won, the rated R films have won the most Oscars out of all the ratings. And the rated G, which we just saw previously, that has the second highest box office ticket sold, doesn't have any Oscars won in this data set. So to me, it says that there's a trade-off. When you make a film, you're either looking to make a film that's going to have high box office receipts or looking to win an Oscar. Looking at the data by genre and the uh, box office receipts, we see that the adventure uh, films have the highest box office receipts, and then we see action and comedy follow. Looking at genre by the number of Oscars won, we see that drama has the highest, um, have won the highest Oscars, have won as, uh, the most Oscars, followed by uh, romance and comedy. And it's, it's interesting because in my data set, out of 368 uh, observations, 36 won Oscars. So if 30 are drama, then that, that tells us something. I mean, in genre, the, in the films, some films have more than one genre, right? You could be a comedy, a thriller, and a drama. Um, so they have more than one uh, genre. But I still think it's very interesting that 30 out of 36 are mm -hmm. drama. So what I would say, tell my client, before I do any more analysis, I would say as a general rule, if I'm looking to um, provide clothing to, a, to someone that can potentially win an Oscar, I would look for... If it's the top 10 uh, film ranked by viewers, I would look for a drama film and a film that's rated R, because my likelihood would be higher, just on some um, exploratory data analysis. 
I decided to do some unsupervised learning um, to look at if I can find any additional information within the data. So looking at uh, k-means with four clusters, trying to predict, uh, trying to see if I can see the, not predict, trying to see if I can see the groups defined uh, for the rating. On the x-axis, I see the length, and on the y-axis, I have the box office tickets. And on the left chart, I have uh, the attempt, the k-means attempt, and on the right chart, I have the actual true clusters. Um, and so if you look at this, you see the, the black dots here look very similar to these green dots. You see this top three, top three. So it looks like there's, there is a, a group that as the length of the movie slightly increases, the box office ticket sales increases. But we, you can't see the other groups too well. Um, and so then I decided to look at a scree plot to tell me what number of clusters would be great for this, this data set. And what this data set tells us is that the within cluster variance, as it decreases, the number of clusters increase, telling us that there's no real elbow defined here, no real place where uh, to pick the actual cluster. So this tells me that maybe k-means is not a good fit for this data set. So as my first model, I decided to fit a logistic regression. And the logistic regression I use all the variables, um, but these are just the significant variables. So the adjusted is really just uh, the box office sales adjusted for inflation. Um, the IMD rating was a significant variable as well as the ranking year, romance, the genre, drama, genre, and adventure and a western also genre. But what's surprising or not surprising is that we already saw this in the exploratory data analysis. We saw that drama and romance were both very important in the decision of an Oscar. So after uh, um, fitting this model, the true negative in return was 98% and the true positive was 70%. And I thought, okay, that's good, but maybe I can get better. Maybe I can reduce this model just using the significant um, variables and maybe get a better fit. Um, and after doing that, my model actually uh, increased my type 2 error by reducing my true positives by 20%. So from 70%, I went to 47%. So then I said, okay, well, maybe I'll try a random forest. And the random forest is using eight variables um, selected at random with 500 trees. Um, and the training set returned a negative rate of 99% and a true positive rate of 100%. And the test set returned a negative uh, a true negative of 94% and a slight, which is slightly lower than the training set, which we expect, as well as a true positive of 100%. So this is a variable importance chart, and it shows us um, which variables are important in order of their importance. So the IM, IMDB rating is important, the audience freshness, the drama, which we saw earlier, and uh, the length, the rank and time, the romance. And these are all things that we saw in the logistic regression as well as in the EDA. Um, so then I decided to think of maybe I can tune the parameters, maybe I can tune the trees and get a better fit. So looking at this tree by era plot, we see that the era stops decreasing around maybe like 30 trees. So I tried different uh, numbers of trees and it actually gave me a better variance explained, which is great but it uh, ultimately lowered my true positive and my true negative percentage. So these are the outputs of my model, the true positive trained for the logistic regression. The training set gave me an 80, 81% true positive, a 50% for the test set and for the true negative, a 99% and for the test at 93. The random forest model with um, eight variables selected at random with uh, 500 trees gave me a true positive training set of 100 and the test set of 100. The true negative train set gave me 99, and the test 94.6. For my next steps, gather more data on the movies that win Oscars to improve the algorithm. Research if there's a pattern within the movie titles. Do titles ha tend to have a positive, negative, or neutral words? Looking at the production of the studios, see if certain studios tend to receive more Oscars than others, and if so, add it to my model. 
And also, I want to uh, look at the area under the curve and, and pick a threshold that best fits the model so you can get better results. Um, and finally, I want to finish my Shiny app. It's not complete, but I want to show you the, the shell of what I have in mind and what I plan to deliver to the client. This is the app. Um, the client can enter the movie title here. Let's say it's NYC Data Science Academy. NYC Data Science Academy. And let's say the box office receipts are 300. Let's say the movie length is 110 minutes. Um, the audience freshness is 75. The IMD rating is 7. The ranking year is 6. And let's say it's a PG-13 film with genre thriller. Let's say it's a drama. And let's say it's comedy. Submit. And then here, the name change. Ultimately, what's going to happen is um, if the model produces a success, it would say the NYC Data Science Academy is projected to receive an award, an Academy Award. And if the model predicts a failure, it would say NYC Data Science Academy is not projected to receive an Academy Award this year. And that concludes my presentation.